Hi class, in this lecture what we want to talk about is how you solve general equations. And really what this lecture is about is, is about multi-step process in solving equations. So we have four objectives in this class. We want to first solve equations of the form ax plus b is equal to c. Uh, this involves undoing, or undoing addition subtraction, then undoing multiplication. Then we want to solve equations of the form ax plus b is equal to cx plus d. Then we want to talk about solving equations containing parentheses. And then the last thing we want to do is solve application problems. So start with uh, easier problems. And basically what we're doing is working to harder and harder problems in this section. OK, so solve equations of the form ax plus b. So in solving an equation of the form ax plus b is equal to c, the goal is to rewrite the equation. Solving that is the variable like x is equal to some constant. OK, that's the goal. So this requires applying both the addition and multiplication properties of equations. So let's start with this easy one. 3x minus 5 is equal to minus 7. You are always going to start by undoing addition or subtraction in first. So the first step you're going to do is you're going to add 7 to each side of the equation. The 7s cancel out, so you're just left with 3x. Minus 5 plus 7 obviously just gets you 2. So then when you're at this step here, to get the x by itself, you're just going to divide both sides by 3. These 3s will cancel, and you'll just be left with x is equal to 2 thirds. So this is it. That's our solution. x is equal to 2 thirds. So undo addition or subtraction, then undo multiplication, always in that order. All right, let's try a little bit harder one, OK? Um, Multiply an equation that contains fractions by using what's called the least common multiple of the denominators is called clearing denominators. All right. It's an alternative method of solving an equation that contains fractions. No one likes fractions working with them, so start by getting rid of the fractions. So clearing denominators are methods of solving uh, equations. This process applies only to equations, never expressions. So we only use it when we want to solve equations. All right, so let's look at this one here. 2 thirds plus 1 fourth x is equal to minus 1 third. So first off, it's like, ah, it's got fractions in it. So to get rid of the fractions, we look at the denominators 3, 4, and 3. And what we say, what is the least common multiple of the numbers 3, 4, and 3? Well, the least common multiples of 3 and 4 is 12. So when once we recognize that, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by 12. Okay, So 12 times all of this and 12 times this. So here you're going to have to distribute the 12 to each expression. So you get 12 times 2 thirds plus 12 times 1 fourth x. 12 times minus 1 third is really just 12 divided by, by 3. Well, 12 divided by 3 is 4. And then don't forget the negative sign here. Here you just have to clean this up. 12 times 2 is 24. 24 divided by 3 is 8. Awesome. 12 times 1 is 12 divided by 4 is 3. So look. This crazy problem that started out like this ended up just simplifying to 8 plus 3x is equal to minus 4. Awesome. Now we just have to solve this now. So I have this 8 here. Okay. So what I'm going to do to get rid of this positive 8 here is I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. So these 8s go away. 4 minus 8 gets me minus 12. Now divide each side by 3. These are gone. So x is equal to minus 12 divided by 3. Well, that just gets me minus 4. And that's our solution right there. So all we had to do was first clear the fractions, and then you solve it just like every other problem, we've, we, or like the previous problem we did. OK. Now let's talk about solving equations of the form ax plus b is equal to cx plus d. So basically what's going on here is, is you have a variable on each side of the equal sign. OK, so the goal, even something like this, is to write it as variables equal to constant. So what we're going to do is begin by writing the equation so that there is only one variable term in the equation. So then we write the equation so there's only one constant term. So, so you're going to sub add or subtract um, one of the variable terms to the other side, basically, is your first step. All right, so let's look at this one. 4x minus 3 is equal to 8x minus 7. So what I want to do is I want to move the 8x to the other side. So since it's positive 8x, what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 8x from each side. So now what you just have to do is you add or subtract the like terms. So I'm putting a minus 8x on each side. So I had a 4x. So 4x minus 8x gets me minus 4x. You still have this minus 3. 
This 8x gets canceled out because you subtracted it. And then you still have this minus 7 here. So your next step, what you're going to do, well, now this just looks like a straight up easy linear equation. Add 3 to each side to get rid of this minus 3. So these are gone. So I have minus 4x is equal to minus 7 plus 3. Well, minus 7 plus 3 is minus 4. So I have minus 4x is equal to minus 4. So then your last step here is just divide both sides by the, the coefficient in front of the x, which is minus 4. These cancel. A negative divided by a negative becomes a positive, And 4 divided by 4 is just 1. So the solution here was x is equal to 1. So all you had to do was move one of the variable terms to the other side and then solve as we had done previously. OK, let's talk about now solving equations containing parentheses. All right, so basically to solve here, what you're going to use is you're going to use the distributive property to remove the parentheses. So whatever value you have in front of the parentheses, just distribute it to clear the parentheses, and then just solve it as we had been with the previous examples. All right, well, let's look at this crazy one. So I have 3x minus 4, and then in parentheses, times 2 minus x is equal to 3, in parentheses, x minus 2, and then the minus 4 out there. All right, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to distribute to clear the parentheses. So this 3x stays. Then you're going to go minus 4 times 2, all right, gets me minus 8. And then minus 4 times minus x gets me positive 4x because a negative times a negative is a positive. Now we're going to distribute this 3. 3 times x gets me 3x. 3 times minus 2 gets me minus 6. And then don't forget you have this minus 4 over here. Now what you have to do is you have to combine like terms. So on the left-hand side of the equals, 3x plus 4x are like terms. So that gets me 7x, don't forget this, minus 8, is equal to 3x. And then minus 6 minus 4 gets me minus 10. Now at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 3x and I'm going to subtract it to each side. So that's gone right there. Then 7x minus 3x gets me 4x minus 8. Don't forget you have this negative 10. So 4x minus 8 is equal to negative 10. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add 8 to each side to cancel these out. So I have minus 10 plus 8 gets me minus 2. So 4x is equal to minus 2. Divide both sides by 4. These cancel out. And then minus 2 fourths ends up just simplifying to minus 1 half when you simplify this fraction. So the solution to this was just minus 1 half. So all you had to do was just to distribute that value in front of the parentheses and then solve as we had in the previous examples. All right, let's, let's end by doing a quick application problem using these formulas. So a company uses the following equation. V is equal to C minus 6,000 times T to determine the depreciation value. So that's what V is, the depreciation value after T years of a milling machine that originally cost C dollars. Okay, so if a milling machine originally cost $50,000, in how many years will the depreciation value of the machine be 38000 Okay, so what I want to find is they're asking me to solve for T because they're asking in how many years will it be worth this. So to find the number of years, we're going to replace C, okay, which is the original cost of 50000 with the new depreciation value 38,000 getting substitution for V and then we're just going to solve for T. So here was my equation plugging in 38,000 for V and 50,000 for C. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the 50,000 over to get the, the variable by itself, the variable term. So 38,000 minus 50,000 gets me minus 12,000 and that's equal to that minus 6,000 T. Well, now to get the t by itself, divide both sides by minus 6,000. And you'll see here that minus 12,000 divided by minus 6,000, negative divided by a negative is a positive, right? And 12,000 divided by 6,000 just gets me 2. So it'll take two years, all right, for this depreciated value of the machine to be $38,000.